We all want the perfect P4. And what does that mean? Because straight away, that top of backswing position might enter your mind, that flat lead wrist is the holy grail. Get the flat lead wrist, nothing can go wrong from there. It's neutral, it's gonna control the face. But if it did, then everyone would be using it. And they're not. Someone like this, 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 and vice versa. So what's right for you? How do we find that? And what effect does this have on the golf shot? Because most important is the golf shot. So everything we do has got to have some effect in a positive way on the golf shot we intend. Otherwise, it's just arbitrary nonsense that really it's no better than a fable because it's something we're just hanging our hope on really that's gonna have some effect because if I do this, this must happen, this must happen, this must happen. But that cause and effect equation is so variable and we only find our own cause and effect through trial and error. Yes, we can be guided by a coach, friends, but most importantly, by ourselves through experiential learning. We've got to experience it, to feel it, to be able to tweak it. But what are we tweaking? Well, for all you motorbike riders out there, this could hold the answer. This could be the key. Because you've probably been drawing the golf ball all your life, but in the form of riding a motorbike. Because this wrist action might just be the answer for that draw, or to stop the slice, or to fade the ball. Because this range of motion seriously influences the club face because it's the rotation about the shaft. And that's what's having the biggest influence on the rotation of that sweet spot. Open, close, anywhere in between. I prefer to think of it as rotation about the shaft, which moves the sweet spot in space. How can we regulate our golf game through developing a more enhanced awareness of that club head? Because what's influencing that club head is your connection to the golf club. So it's happening here. And most of us recognize this action. We're using that a lot. We're also using this a lot. We're using rotation this way and this way for power and controlling the club face. But the one missing plane of motion that we just don't develop that fine awareness for, and for me, is probably numero uno in controlling that club face, is the rotation about the shaft. Brum, brum. <laughs> so, we've got to accelerate this thing, okay? We can accelerate it through this too, it's only minimal, but what we're really doing is we're just controlling that face. So that on a very basic level, we're gonna explore it and see what it does to our face and path relationship. Because often I see lots of people wanting to say, draw the ball, they move their path to the right, but they don't recognize the change in the release pattern that goes with that shift of path to the right. And what I mean by change of release pattern is the relationship of the club face. The club face has to rotate more. If you're shifting your club path to the right, so the swing's going to the right, your face has to rotate more. If you use the same face to path relationship, but just shift your path to the right, you're gonna get the same shot, but just further to the right or left, dependent on what shot shape you're going for. The gap between the face and path has to change. So the more we go to the right, the more we're gonna close the face if we want to get the bigger draws or a more noticeable draw and start the ball right and curve it back. But it gives us a starting point to play around with and start to explore, likewise fades. So if you're a slicer of the ball or a hooker of the ball, this is a great place to start because your P4, top of backswing, might encourage the ensuing release pattern to take place and regulate that ball a little bit more favorably. So we've got a starting point. So we're not thinking of a set position, we're actually thinking of a motion, but we're gonna use a different point to start from. We're gonna start from here. We're gonna start with the lead arm on the handlebars, and we're gonna start with a chopping action. So we find our grip. So we're in the sagittal plane, and that's giving me a feeling of the leverage in this direction. It's also gonna enable me to rotate 90 degrees and use the same action in this direction. So we're encouraging that kinetic chain from the shoulder through the arm to the club, from the torso, from the pelvis, and down to the ground. We're gonna save that for another day because we've got hundreds of videos on that. But this missing plane of motion, the motorbike grip, using the throttle, using the throttle on the motorbike is probably gonna help you explore your optimal club face relationship to the grip and to the swing. So if you're hitting slicers, okay, we know we've got an open face to the path. So what does a closed face feel like? Well, starting here, 
with the club in the lead hand, leaving it here. We're not going to move it across. I'm going to rotate. I'm just going to rotate it so my palm's facing up. So you can see what happens to the club face. It points down. So the palm rotates up, supinates, and the face goes down. Now what I'm going to do is just keep the club there and bring my right hand across. And from here now, tilt forward into a posture, and I'm going to swing back and through. This time, starting from the beginning again, I'm going to stop at the top. And notice what it looks like. We've still got the same relationship that we started with here. And that's the flexed lead wrist, the bowed wrist, the Kepka, the Dustin Johnson, all those tour players that completely revolutionized wrist conditions. But it's been going on for years. And that might not be particularly the wrist condition you need. We're just talking about joint action. So it's really a movement, and that's why I start from here, and then make a swing. So you can feel the effect it has on the rest of the motion. And we can hit shots like this. So I'd suggest a T-peg to start with. Find that set up here, got the stance, got the grip, feel the leverage. Gonna rotate it now, not twisting the club face without the grip. I'm gonna twist the grip, twist the handlebars. Now that's super strong in golfing terms. This is palms facing up. That is already a very, very rotated club face. And now bending forward, started from in front of the ball, just a three quarter swing. It was a big, fat, filthy hook. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, we've just got back from the Belfry. It was our very first Zen Golf Mechanics coaching trip. And we've got another one coming and it's in Turkey and it's at the end of November. It's a great price. We've got five nights four days each day we have three and a half hours of coaching on all areas of the game it's a deep dive very immersive experience of zen golf mechanics and then we've got the tour player experience with foz and belty it really is an amazing week we're at the gloria resort in turkey fantastic course amazing hotel can't wait to go great sun great weather it's going to be fantastic guys check out the link and look forward to seeing you there not that desirable but that's just opened up the door that's created opportunity for me to shift my swing direction to the right what we can also take note of is the divot entered the ground here pretty square and it rotated a lot so that encouraged a lot of rotation of the club face so it was closing the face to the path so i got a ball that started a bit left and drew if i just change my swing direction now so i'm just going to change the direction by moving to the right a little bit moving the rib cage round starting over here find that grip so I've rotated, bring the right hand across. Don't bring the club across to meet the right hand. Move the right hand across there. Now a three quarter swing, but with the intention of starting the ball much further right. And that was perfect for what I wanted. Just to the right of the 250, drew onto the 250. Divert, more to the right. More in keeping what, with what would be a, an intended draw. Because I had these club face conditions in relation to the grip, it facilitated a free release for the draw, which in turn enabled me to explore with my path. But if I've not got the ability to recognize that release, utilize it, let it go, then how can I shift my path? Because I'm just gonna create more problems by trying to now somehow fix a ball flight that's going too far right and I can't draw it. I'm fighting the draw and I might be starting to use my path more. I might go down a very slippery slope. First of all, recognize what effect this club face has on the rest of the motion, what it does to present an opportunity for exploration with your practice, with the direction of your swing. Vice versa, we can open the face. Same thing. So now, palm faces to the ground, it pronates, club face rotates up. So now, what this might present itself as in the swing at that all important P4 is what might be perceived in the textbooks as a cupped wrist. Extended. Of course, we know we've rotated the club face open. So this is going to encourage probably more of a left to right ball flight, an open face to the path. So let's see. Let's open it up. Let's move the right hand across. Remember, we don't move the shaft. Otherwise, we're potentially just going to introduce unrecognizable compensations and go back to what we feel comfortable doing. So we're just pushing the boundaries here. We're just exploring the extremities. And from here now, three quarter swing back and through. And as expected, Loads aloft, you can see the path was pretty straight, but the face actually was the opposite. 
the entry was pretty square but the exit point of the divot was open ball started right flew higher bit of shape but loads of loft too much loft and the ball didn't start left so what we're going to do now we're going to start by moving around the ball so now i'm going to direct the swing this way open that face and now play that swing bit clean this is very unusual for me it's not a swing that i recognize moving swinging to the left that's for sure so for me and you'll probably explore this and experience the same thing face is way open ball pops up lose loads of distance shapes a bit to the right with a longer club the face path relationship will be bigger because of the reduced loft we're going to get lots more curvature so this is the typical case here of I'm not too far off line with my mid irons, short irons. As soon as I get to longer irons, I don't get that much distance and I get more of a slice. Well, that's what I'm experiencing here with a really open face. What about if I do it a little bit less? So now I'm just gonna open it a little bit, just a fraction. Totally different, much better strike, bit of fade. Started left of target, got the shot. So I'm playing around with the amount I'm rotating the shaft, but I'm doing it here, this end of the chain. So I'm starting to develop an awareness for this end of the chain. Club head awareness, club face awareness. I don't suggest you check the top of your backswing. You can, just to help support that imagery. Sometimes that mental image can give you some affirmation of where you are, give you some anchor. But ideally, we wanna be using the whole motion. But if that's a place you recognize, no problem with it. There's no rights and wrongs. The self-talk is driving the action. That's all that's important. So whatever anchor, or however you recognize your attachment to this is really irrelevant as long as you repeat a similar outcome. So I don't have to open it as much for a fade, just more neutral and then see what that's like. Starts it left starts to curve a little bit so i'm finding my ideal grip that is neutralizing my ball fly so we've regulated that ball fly all got a sense of it now we're going to do it from a normal stance so we can take our grip have a waggle of the club get comfortable moving it don't change the orientation of the club face to the grip we've already ascertained what is the ideal relationship here as a starting point this is going to evolve and will change but we're not going to compromise ourselves. This is where self-sabotage can sometimes take effect. We get ourselves in the right place, we've got good intention, and we start to inhibit the execution of that by starting to conform to some kind of habitual setup we've always used. And it's this behavior when we address the golf ball and now our focus becomes the golf ball and suddenly we're reacting to different stimulus. Everything else is out the window. We start to introduce tension. We start to essentially default back to our old patterns without recognizing it. It's the most common form of self-sabotage we see every day, making great practice swings. But as soon as you put the golf ball there, suddenly the attachment you've got to the ball, the attention behind that really influences your movement and it starts to default back and we don't experience much change. Whereas here, very different, we've taken our grip in a different place, we recognize it in a different place, we move it over here, we waggle. This is a brand new blueprint that's starting to emerge and we're gonna let it happen. So now we stand to the golf ball, we've not interfered with our grip and club face relationship, we're just gonna trust it and go for it. And nail it, best one of the session. I'm not hit any, <laughs> so it's gotta be the best one. <laughs> I've hit a few, but not with a normal setup. But it's those balls that I've been hitting there that have facilitated the optimization for that swing. So it's a journey we take ourselves on with our practice. Don't assume bad shots mean bad swings. It's part of a journey. And it's this plan that we have to have with our practice. We have to go there, seeing the journey, not just hoping for good shot after good shot after good shot. You're taking yourself through a journey in a structured way. And that is how to practice in the mode of self-discovery with purpose and develop that club face awareness it's all about the motorbike throttle don't forget that p4 from from